Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the continuation of the previous video, part one, in which we discussed about the further videos as well as a lot more. So do check that out if you haven't yet checked that video out. And this video is of course in continuation and we'll be looking at the two very important terms in this chapter 2.5 of IBDB ESS. So the two terms that we'll be looking at are quadrats and transepts. Here, it can be visible that I have displayed both the terms as key terms for this video, and you'll have to know them. Uh, you know how you have to know how what these terms really mean in order to understand the rest of the video because this is going to be in detail for this, and I really wanted to spend enough time on this because it's a very important topic. So, uh, the term quadrat is uh, is a frame. So I'm going to draw also because I've, uh, you know, chosen a chapter to explain which I can draw. So it's like a, a frame. It's kind of a, a square or well, mostly square, like it can be different shapes as well, uh, but of a specific size. And it depends on what you're really examining and studying. So, for example, it's a, a, you know, a square quadrat. So you can have square also. So here I have made a square quadrat and it can also be divided into several different ones so it can be either like this just like one big one or it can be as this with more sub you know sections and divide uh, it, it divides them into more sub parts it can be like this also so it can be any one of them and both the ways it is going to be a quadrat just a different size and a different frame size or whatever so talking about transect now, so for a transect, instead of a, you know, a frame, it's a path. So for example, let's take, there's a place and, you know, you want to throw a transect or you want to have a, you know, you want to do a transect. So what you do is you can either have like a line or you can have a strip. So it can be a strip, it can be a thick strip or a thin strip, depending on the purpose again. So, you know, you can have a thick strip like this one or a thin strip like the previous one that completely depends and you can really record the occurrence of the species of animal or plant you are studying in the particular area so if it's a very small species you can use um you know you can use this but if it's a larger species which you know may not come or you know they can be used um another one which can be used is this one then so it can depend on what kind of species you want to use and you can use a uh, a line or a strip accordingly so uh, this is a line and this would be a strip because it's a thicker one and it covers an area right let's move forward in the detail now i already talked about quadrats in a little you know a little i'll say not in that depth because i wanted you to now look at the depth i just explained you so that you understand this much what i'm going to be doing now better so let's just get into the depth of quadrats and transects. So we'll start with quadrats first. So again, the quadrant that you would choose will be on the size of the organism or the plant that you are sampling. Okay. Again, I just repeated the same thing so that you remember this. Then talking about the quadrat size and the quadrat area and the organism. So if you, for example, you know, um, very small organisms like algae, algae, and the shrimps, and tree trunks, and balls, whatever, if you want to get either like algae or regions and uh, trucks and walls, so you can actually use a very small quadrat for that because they're very small organisms and you can use a 10 by 10 centimeter quadrat size with this quadrat area, 0 0.01 meter square. If it's a little bigger, like small plants like grasses and herbs and shrubs or very slow or sessile animals like, you know, mussels. So they can use 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 meter. And for medium sized plants or bushes, you can use 1 meter into 1 meter and 5 meter into 5 meter for mature trees because I think that'll be quite a lot. 5 meter is still a big area. Right, so accordingly, you can choose the spider of, uh, size of quadrat so that it's easier for you to, you know, conduct your research. 
research or sample your data. So, of course, you need to be striking and balancing the strike between the increasing accuracy with the increasing size and time available. And, of course, the number of species that are available in the quadra that has been placed. Okay, So, it has to be really very accurate. So, guys, moving forward, I'll try to go a little slow because now this is going to be really deep. So, when you are really, you know, seeing the size of a chasm, the ecosystem, and how well there's, uh, you know, their abundance, their distribution, everything, you have to work out these samples and, you know, how you would do that, right? And what size would be, you know, the simplest and the easiest and the act most accurate way out for your sampling, you know, for your task or for your research. So, you can look at this. Um, this line graph, which shows the number of species and the quadrat size. So accordingly, you can look forward. So you guys can see this. As you increase the number of samples, the plot number of species found, when this number is stable, you will have, you know, when the number is stable, you guys can see in this case. <clears throat> then, it, uh, you know, you'll be able to get into like with eight samples or something. And if you increase the quadrat size, for example, you know, line, if it's like side length is 10 centimeter to 15 centimeter or like 10, 15 to 20 and so on, then the plot number of species found with the number will increase. You guys can see it here. It's in increasing order. Just give me a second. It can be seen as an increasing order. Right, so until it reaches like a co you know a constant, you know where a quadrat size is to be used. So when it reaches the constant, that is the quadrat size that you're supposed to incorporate or use. Now, how to place the quadrats? Right, it's a big question. Right, how to do that? Please remember, it has to be done very randomly, very unbiased. Okay, very systematically and continuously also, according to the pattern. So random quadrats. Okay, let's let's just go through the data that we've been provided with, and I'll explain thoroughly accordingly. So quadrats can be placed by throwing the quadrat over your shoulder, and you need to face towards the you know the direction you're throwing. So for example, I'll explain this particular line. So, example, if this is the person, if this is you, and you're facing this side. So, what you'll do is, you'll throw the opposite side behind yourself so that you don't see where you're throwing, okay? Or, if not done, you could also be, you know, um, telling someone else to help you out with that. You can tell someone else who doesn't really know what's going on and you can tell that person to really throw so that the person doesn't really know and cannot be biased about that. But if, you know, this is not done properly, there could be, you know, uh, dangers and you know, it can be very wrong data and very not, you know, I'll say not proper data, not accurate data because it will be not random. Right, so you may decide which, like, you know, which side to throw and everything. It can be very, um, you know, wrong, as I said, if not done properly. So that's something you have to keep mind in mind. So do it very unbiased and very randomly. So the conventional method, the first method, is used to, um, you know, is to use random number tables. So map your uh, study area. So for example, if this is the study area, if this is the ground which is in marked and it's not like a very accurate shape, so you can use it. Then you draw a grid over the study area. So you guys can see these grids that have been drawn. This all. And you can see it's number like this is 15, this is 23 and 29, etc. So what you just do is, just give me a second. So you just uh, number them as I just showed you guys. And after that, Use a na random number table to identify which square you need to sample. 
So for example, you just you know have all of these numbers written, for example, on a piece of paper and you randomly shut your eyes and pick one of them and you get for example 10. So you now you have to study this area which is called the 10. And you will now study only this area because that's what you randomly picked. There can be several different ways and you know, st uh, you know things that can be used to make this uh, process random, but it has to be random in order to make it correct and accurate. You can also use other ways such as this one. I haven't really seen a lot in past papers and I don't think it's that important, but I'll still explain because it's there. It's uh, there in the syllabus. So I didn't want to miss that out. It's the uh, stratified random sampling and it's used when there's like obvious difference. Like for example, there's like a, you know, a prairie and a forest. So what you can do is you have to deal with like different uh, particular, you know, areas and they have to have different vegetation types. Like for example, one can be like a, you know, a dry land and one can be like a, you know, a grassland or whatever. It can be different veg uh, vegetation, right? Or it can be uh, three separate areas to be studied. So whatever. That doesn't really matter, but it has to be uh, at least two. So. You deal with each of the areas separately, you guys can see. Forest is different and prairie is different. Then, talking about uh, draw a grid for each area, you guys can see the grids have been drawn. The number of squares, it, the, it, the area have to be numbered. They can be same numbers or different. So you have to just number the squares in each area. So the numbers that you'll be giving can be either same or different. You can just, you know, give any number. And then you just have to choose a random number table and then identify which square and, you know, which square has been, you know, chose, been chosen using the number. And you can just sample that area. So, for example, this square has been chosen. This particular square, then you just sample this area and you can be done. That's so simple and I hope you guys understood. And I'm sorry, this is a glitch in my, um, you know, laptop. It's just uh, changing the... Uh, place I'm actually teaching so I'm sorry if that's uh, creating irritation but I'm really sorry for that video I'll be trying to get that over with the next video as well looking forward for transact so we can have different types of trans transacts and now we'll be looking at that because it is important to know about transacts as well